Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Two Save Violin. Today we're going to talk about. How do you introduce that is this? Such a classic Two Save intro. Is yeah. What are we? What are we doing what again? Was it today? Again? Uh, no, no, okay. We're watching a uh, clip. That many of you have sent to us before to review. Uh -huh. It is a scene involving violin playing, and it is from a TV series called Chicago Med. As someone that nearly became doctor, and uh, someone that did you nearly become doctor? No. Maybe could have become doctor. <laughs> uh, we feel like this is a perfect video for us to review. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's watch it together, let's shall we? Start. Can you hear this? Yes. How about now? Not as well as the other. Okay, first of all, that is Whoa, a that's chunky tuning fork. Second of all, I, I get the effect they're going for. It's like, kind of resembled tinnitus. Mm. But no tuning fork. Yeah, it would be like that an high. A, yeah. It's normally... You a musician? Mm-hmm. Getting my master's at CCPA, the conservatory. Impressive. Found I said as a musician, losing hearing is the biggest nightmare. Yeah. We rely on these so much, but it's also the source of our pleasure. Yeah. Now we make music because we love hearing music. music. Yeah. Hearing music. I actually did back in the day have when I was in the conservatory had a small kind of health scare. I thought I was gonna have hearing problems and hearing loss as well. Turned out it was fine, but I had like funny problems with my hearing, and that was the most scary thing ever. I don't mean to scare you, but becoming a doctor was actually my fallback plan. I wanted to be a musician, a violinist, in fact. Med is easier than being a musician. <laughs> I don't have a fallback plan. Music's all I ever wanted to do. You see, that's what I was missing. Here, can you squeeze my hands? This doctor sounds so, like, condescending. <laughs> see, that's what I'm missing. <laughs> Good luck, you're about to go wow. deaf. Paganini C minor caprice broke my will. <laughs> Wait, what's that? It's a Manini Prisper. Paganini C minor caprice Paganini C, C minor. minor caprice. Number four? I'll give that to you. That one broke my spirit too. Yeah, <laughs> that one is messed up. That's a good reference. Someone did their research. Yeah. You and just about everyone else. It's a bear. Yeah. <laughs> I played snare in marching band freshman year. I think it was a C minor. Just... Yeah. What was this? What did I say? Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. I've got a recital next month. All Bach program. Maybe you can come. Sure. I'd love to. Dr. Halstead? i got a recital coming. Sure, I'd love to. It walks away. She's got a slight nystagmus in, in her, her right eye, I know. And the hearing loss in the left. I'm thinking it could be syndromic. Well, apparently you didn't need a consult. Come on, I value your opinion. How come you never told me you want to be a musician? You want an opinion? Call a neurosurgeon and send her for a stat head CT. Dr. Halstead. Yeah. Your violinist. Radiology just sent the report. Has anyone from neurosurgery seen these yet? They're talking about scheduling surgery as soon as possible. Acoustic neuroma? Tumors, essentially. I know this is a TV show, but maybe it's the fact that right now they haven't said anything to trigger musicians. I'm actually believing it. Yeah, I'm into exactly. the story. Yeah, right yeah. Now. They haven't said any stupid yet. Yeah. So these neuromas are are pressing against your inner ear, and that's why you've been experiencing the hearing loss and the dizziness. We need to remove them and stop the internal bleeding. What are the side effects? There's a good chance you'll lose your hearing. My hearing? Yes. Oh, 
Dylan, I know it seems like your world is coming apart right now, but we got lucky here today. Okay, that fall you took might have just saved your life. I'm a musician. I don't know any of these med terms, so I, can, I don't even know it's legit. Yeah, maybe the doctors watching this yeah, are like neuros acoustical fibrosis. Yeah, yeah. I pulled this out of the deep depths of my closet. I reached out to Anne Sophie Mutter's people, but it seems she's on tour in China. Did they just say Anne Sophie Mutter? Oh, uh, okay, that's a bit ridiculous. How do you just reach out to Anne Sophie Mutter? Maybe you can. Maybe I think you can, but it's just like I'm impressed that you mentioned the name Anne Sophie Mutter. Yeah. It's like, wow, nice one. I'm guessing you know Bach's concerto in D minor for two violins. In my day, we all learned it. Sure. Get out your violin, Dylan. We're gonna have that recital. Come on. I know she's meaning the best. I don't know what her character is like, but the violin was just found out that I was gonna lose my hearing, and the doctor was like, "Get out your violin, Eddie. I'm gonna play Bach right now." Like, I'm not the. You're not the one losing your like, hearing. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the memory is not just in the head. We also have what's called kinesthetic memory. The body's memory. It remembers movement resistance and the position of its parts so hearing or not your body can still remember how to play i'm gonna make a bit of a nuanced point here i know this is probably going to be taken the wrong way i guess from a musician's perspective part of the re a part of the reason we make music is because we can enjoy it to hear it it's not just so we can play the instrument but also so we can enjoy hearing the sounds we make from the instrument. Second of all, part of practice is a feedback loop between playing and hearing. And hearing yeah. You experiment different feels to hear what sound you get and then you adapt to it. And to now have one of those feedback loops shut off, it's very difficult. And I think to give an example for that, Heifetz once gave his students uh, a class where he detuned his vi their violin because the student was taking too long tuning it. And he was saying, look, in a real concert, when you're playing a 45 minute concerto, with temperature changing, the strings are going to go slightly out of tune. Mm -hmm. And it is up to you to listen and adapt on the moment to the intonation. Yes. Even Beethoven, the genius deaf composer that was able to compose symphony, there are reports of him when he was losing hearing desperately trying to play the piano holding a metal rod to transmit the sound vibrations from the piano to his skull like just to hear he was a genius that could compose a symphony in his head and he was that desperate to hear yeah. that last bit of frequency yeah so just putting these things out yeah. there you guys let us know what you think i know concentrate on the feel the vibrations just close your eyes and remember. She could actually play. They could both, they could play. both play. Yeah, I was like, whoa! And they didn't even try to make it sound professional, like at a high level. They made it sound real. As, like, made it sound real. What it would sound like of two people just pulling the violin. Yeah, down. and then someone that hasn't practiced in ages. Yeah, she can still remember it. Yeah, yeah. dude. Damn, that was props impressive. to the actresses. Yeah, I was oh. really sad when she got wheeled off. Yeah. It's like the final performance. I know it's just a TV show, but damn, that's heavy. That's freaking intense. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll watch you, watch you play it and make the conclusion. Please subscribe! See you guys next time! Practice! 40 hours a day! Or you'll have to become a doctor!
<laughs> so I had to talk and play at the same time. <laughs>